Hello and welcome to the Symphonic Orchestra Sound Set Tutorial for Sibelius, created by kind young Sir Jonathan Loving. My name is Jared and I'm from Synthnosis.com and today I'm going to be walking you through the setup process. Installing the sound set enables you to integrate your symphonic orchestra samples from within Sibelius for realistic playback, more so than a synthesizer instrument. This goes for silver, gold, and platinum, as well as the Pro XP extensions. Please download the appropriate sound set for your symphonic orchestra samples and I'll take you from there. Once you've got your sound set downloaded, it's going to contain a few different kinds of files, and we've got to take these files and distribute them into the correct folders. First, we need to go to My Computer, and then go to your hard drive, which is C on My Computer, going into the Users folder, and then into the User Account folder. We're going to look for the App Data folder, and sometimes App Data is a hidden folder, and we've got to set Vista to where we can see this by going to Start Settings, and then Control Panel. And take in mind here that I'm using the Classic View. And on the right side, we're going to look for folder options. Go to the View tab, and under Hidden Files and Folders, we need to make sure that Show Hidden Files and Folders is filled in. Click Apply, and then OK, and then you can close it. You should now be able to see the App Data folder. We need to go into the App Data folder, and then go into the Roaming folder, and then go into the Sibelius Software folder, and lastly into the Sibelius Phi folder. And from here, you should have two folders, one named House Styles and one named Sounds. And if you don't have them, just right click and click New. And then you're going to need to type in House Styles and then create another folder named Sounds. Take in mind here that with Windows XP, the process is going to be slightly different due to the app data folder being named differently and being in a different location. Once that's done, we need to go into the house styles folder, and then we need to drop the library file into this. And as you can see, I have multiple libraries installed here. And first I did the Gold Pro XP file, and now I'm doing the Platinum Pro XP file. Once that's done, we need to go back and go into the sounds folder. Now here you're going to see that I also have multiple files in here because of multiple libraries. And for the Gold Pro XP set that I'm installing here, it has two XML files. And take in mind here that a Platinum or a Platinum Pro XP sound set is going to have seven different XML files and you need to copy every single one of them into this folder. So let's just copy those over and drop them in here. Okay, and lastly, you need to double click the appropriate registry file. You have a 64 bit file and a 32 bit file. This is a 64 bit system, so we need to double click it and then click yes and then click OK, and you should be good. Okay, now we need to go into the registry editor. You need to go to start and then to run. Type in reg edit, R E G E D I T, and then click OK. And from here, we need to browse to the appropriate location where the um, register key is. Please look in the manual and you're going to see there's a 32-bit location and there's a 64-bit location. For now I'm going to show you the 64-bit location because this is a 64-bit machine. Let's go on the left here and start browsing to the appropriate location. Okay, now you should see your installed libraries on the left side here, and if you do, you're in the right place. And for 64-bit users, please go nowhere right now. I'm going into the 32-bit location just so I can show everyone that has a 32-bit system where they should be. Okay, let's go to the left here, and let's browse to it. Okay, now once you're there, you should see your information on the right side, and I mean your serial number and your authorization number, and I've edited it out for this tutorial. And you're going to look for something called Content DIR, and if you don't see it, you need to right click, click New, and then String Value, and type it in. It's just C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E and then D-I-R. Okay, we need to right click it, click Modify and you see that we need to put something here. And what we need to put here is the appropriate directory for where our library is installed. So let's browse to mine. Mine happens to be on my D drive and I'm browsing to the appropriate folder now. Okay, now once you're there, what I would do is at the top, I would right click and I would copy the location. And it'll save you a little time. Right click and click copy. Let's go back to the registry editor. Right click content DIR click modify, right click in the box, and then click paste, click OK, 
and that's it. Okay, now we can finally go into Sibelius, and I'm going to show you how to start a new score first of all. Um, I'm going to start an orchestral film score. I'm going to click Next, and at the top left, you need to click the appropriate house style. And if you want unpitched percussion, you're going to need to click the appropriate house style, then hit Previous, and then go to Change Instruments. Okay, now on the right side, you need to take out any unpitched instruments by selecting them, and then clicking um, Delete from Score. Let's get this other one here. Okay. Just make sure that your sound set is selected at the top left. And we can select any drums that we want here and click Add to Score. Okay, there we go. Let's click OK. Now make sure that Orchestral Film Score is selected. Let's go to Next and make sure that your house style is selected again here, please. And then you can click Next and then you can finish up as you usually do. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up a pre-existing score. What we're going to need to do is have one open. We need to go to House Styles, and then go to Import House Style, and we need to make sure that the appropriate one is selected at the top left here. And we need to deselect something here. Just make sure that Engraving Rules and Document Setup and the bottom three are unchecked. You can see this in the manual. Okay. Okay, and for a pre-existing score, we need to set up the percussion mapping. You need to triple click a staff, and I mean triple click, this is very important. Triple click and go to the right and make sure that the entire thing is selected. And once you've triple clicked, you can go to create, and then go to other, and then instrument change. And here we need to select the appropriate sound set on the top left and the appropriate kind of drum that you selected. And then click OK. And as you can see here, it changed, so it worked. Okay, from here go to play at the top and then go to playback devices. You need to click new and you need to type in the sound set name. I'm going to put EWQLSO Gold Pro XP Contact. And then I'm going to click OK. Now on the right side here, you need to deactivate any VSD instrument. And we need to add at least one instance of Contact 3. <laughs> Okay, now on the right side under sound set, you need to click the down arrow and choose the appropriate sound set that you're using. The light versions are the individual articulation samples, and the regular ones are the key switch versions. And then I'm going to click save so we don't have to do it again. And for Platinum and Platinum Pro XP users, you're going to have to activate at least three more instances of Contact 3 to cover each choir. The Woodwinds Choir, the Brass Choir, the Strings Choir and percussion. And for each one on the right side, you need to select, let's go here, and let's do the uh, brass. The next one's going to be strings. The next one's going to be woodwinds. And lastly, we're going to do percussion. And that's only for Platinum or Platinum Pro XP. And just make sure to save it after you're done. Okay, we're off the last step now. We need to make sure that the mixer is in view by going to the top and selecting Window and then going to Mixer. On the left side is going to be a little arrow that you click that's pointing to the right and it's going to expand. Okay, now on the bottom right you need to click the little speaker icon and this is going to assign it channels and samples should begin loading. If you receive an error, it's probably because Contact 3.02 was installed on your system and it has stability issues with Sibelius. Please refer to the manual and roll back your version of Contact to 3.01. If you hear a melody after the sample loading, it means installation was successful and you're good to go.